Mr. Speaker, progress in any society can be achieved in several ways. The history of many nations and peoples has shown that the past, no matter how painful or controversial, must be openly and fearlessly addressed. There is no requirement for people to agree a common history as shared experiences are often differently perceived and recalled. However, too much of history has been whispered or unrecorded. The Commission of Inquiry into Historic Land Losses has afforded an opportunity to those whose voices had either been silenced or ignored to openly tell their story and to be heard. Mr. Speaker, honorable members will recall that it was during the proceedings of this honorable house on the 4th of July, 2014, the late honorable member C. Walton Brown Jr., a member of the Bermuda Progressive Labor Party, then the official opposition, introduced the motion which ultimately led to the establishment of this commission of inquiry. Aggrieved at community reports of land stolen from citizens of Bermuda, he characterized his vision for pursuing historic losses of land in Tucker's town in this way. And I quote, Mr. Speaker, we have an opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to help correct some of the wrongs of the bad old days when justice was a fleeting illusion for many and where the rich, the powerful, and the connected acted with impunity. The theft of land, the dispossession of property, took place in this country on a wide scale and over a long period of time. The villains in these actions, Mr. Speaker, were oftentimes lawyers, real estate agents, and politicians, but not exclusively so. The victims were at times the poor and the marginalized, but not always. What the victims shared, though, Mr. Speaker, was an inability to, show, to secure a just outcome." End quote. The parliamentary debate that followed revealed that not only were there particular concerns regarding two of the most well-known expropriations in Bermuda, Tucker's Town and St. David's Island, but also concerns regarding widespread injustices in dealing with losses of land in other areas across the island. The motion approved by this House was as follows, and I quote, to take note of historic losses in Bermuda of citizens' property through theft of property, dispossession of property, and adverse possession claims, and be it resolved that this Honorable House calls on His Excellency the Governor to establish a commission of inquiry into all such known claims and to determine, where possible, the viability of any such claims and make recommendations for any victims of wrongful action to receive compensation and justice." End quote. Honorable members will likewise recall that then Governor Mr. George G. Ferguson refused to issue an order establishing a commission of inquiry, stating in a letter read to the House of Assembly, and I quote, I have concluded that these concerns are neither so clear nor so urgent as to justify my taking the still unusual step of commissioning an inquiry under the 1935 Act, end quote. Mr. Speaker, the legislature, in its wisdom, approved amendments to the relevant legislation, and as such, pursuant to Section 1A of the Commissions of Inquiry Act 1935, I, with the support of the Cabinet, determined to appoint a commission for this purpose on the 19th of June, 2019, and caused public notification in the official gazette on the 1st of November, 2019. Mr. Speaker, honorable members will no doubt recall that the Commission of Inquiry's terms of reference were to, first, inquire into historic losses of citizens' property in Bermuda through theft of property, dispossession of property, adverse possession claims, and or such other unlawful or regular means by which land was lost in Bermuda. Second, collect
collect and collate any and all evidence and information available relating to the nature and extent of such historic losses of citizens' property. Third, prepare a list of all land to which such historic losses relate. Fourth, identify any persons, whether individuals or bodies corporate, responsible for such historic losses of citizens' property. And fifth, to refer, as appropriate, matters to the Director of Public Prosecution for such further action as may be determined necessary by that office. Mr. Speaker, in advance of receipt to the final report, the Cabinet took note of an executive summary which set out the procedures adopted as well of the Commission of Inquiry's recommendations. Mr. Speaker, the members appointed to the Commission were serving as Chair, the Honorable Retired Justice Norma Wayne Miller, OBE, Retired Puny Judge of the Bermuda Supreme Court, Deputy Chair, the Honorable Wayne Parenchiff, CPM, Retired Assistant Commissioner of Police, Former Minister for National Security, Minister of Culture and Human Affairs, and Minister Responsible for the National Drug Commission. Mrs. Maxine Bins, LLB, Barrister and Attorney, Former Consultant Legal Counsel with Business Development, and Retired Legislative Assistant with the, Bermuda, with the Business Development Unit. Mrs. Frederica Forth, JP, Former Vice President of a Local Bank and Experienced Realtor. Mrs. Linda Milligan-White, LLB, JP, Senior Legal Counsel practicing at the Bermuda Bar, former Minister of Legislative Affairs and Women's Issues. Mr. Jonathan Starling, Economic and Cooperative Development Officer, Bermuda Economic Development Corporation. Mr. Quinton Stubble, Professional Land Surveyor. Mr. Speaker, I am grateful to these commissioners for their service and the incredibly detailed and diligent manner in which they approach the mammoth task. Mr. Speaker, the Commission of Inquiry decided that it should call for and examine evidence and then determine whether such evidence taken as a whole demonstrated a structural problem which was either historic or nature and or which demonstrated systemic failure. Each case filed before the Commission of Inquiry was examined with the Commission, then determining whether the particular case represented an instance of historic loss of land by a citizen of Bermuda through theft or dispossession of property, adverse possession claims, or other unlawful or irregular means by which land was lost in Bermuda. To ensure that the Commission of Inquiry's work was known within the community, a website was created. The website contained basic information about the background and composition of the Commission Inquiry, as well as its operational rules and procedures. To attract further the attention of members of the community who may wish to make claims, the COI placed newspaper advertisements inviting persons to apply for standing, or if they did not wish to have standing, to share information with the Commission of Inquiry. To broaden the Commission's reach, social media notifications about upcoming hearings were posted and periodic press statements were issued to the traditional media. Mr. Speaker, I would like to invite honorable members to take note that the Commission of Inquiry, from April through to July 2021, met with numerous experts for assistance, clarifying outstanding queries and giving historical context to practices that may have occurred in the past. Adhere to all COVID-19 restrictions in place. Arrangements were made to accommodate those who cannot appear in person, including commissioners themselves on occasion. Video conferencing software was used throughout all Commission of Inquiry hearings. Held a total of 74 hearings, variously at the Grotto Bay Beach Resort, Hamilton Parish, Willowbank Resort and Conference Center, and the Royal Bermuda Regiment Warwick Camp in Warwick. Mr. Speaker, the Commission of Inquiry received a total of 53 claims. 18 were heard, 15 were denied, 10 were withdrawn, and 10 were closed by commissioners for jurisdictional reasons. 
Mr. Speaker, honorable members will note that the report makes a considerable number of recommendations. These apply to each of the various cases considered and are divided into actions to be taken by the legislature, private individuals, and other entities. Mr. Speaker, the government now sees the report, will examine the recommendations in detail and determine what can be done to address them. I would highlight for honorable members that the recommendations include that the government considers establishing a permanent mechanism of state machinery to review claims concerning the historic loss of properties. The mechanism should be fully resourced with human and financial resources to address all claims and concerns post the COI, ultimately with a view of having a legal framework in place to facilitate remedies and or an award of compensation. That the government ensures that the history of Tucker's Town and St. David's Island's expropriations are memorialized suitably by mandating its inclusion in Bermuda history taught in our schools, its placement in libraries and other repositories and by erection of a suitable physical monument ideally situated both in both Tucker's Town and St. David's Island. Third, the government establishes an independent land tribunal to deal with all outstanding legacy issues involving historic losses of land in Bermuda and to make recommendations based on the findings of the Commission inquiry and others that may emerge. Mr. Speaker, the work of the Commission was greatly enhanced by a team of administrative staff, legal counsel, researchers, and investigators. The final editing of the report was done by former Permanent Secretary, Mr. Robert K. Horton, and his oversight has proven invaluable to producing this final report. Mr. Speaker, honorable members will recall that in fiscal 2019-2020, $723,000 was budgeted for the work of the Commission. With the advent of the pandemic and the inability of the Commission to meet your evidence and perform its functions as intended, the time within which the work was done had to be extended. Additionally, Mr. Speaker, as report indicates, and will be supported by eventual release of the appendixes, this is among the most detailed and painstaking tasks undertaken by an independent body. There can be no doubt that the work of the Commission was an exercise in determining the truth of painful histories and giving voice to claims that others rejected or refused to hear. Mr. Speaker, the Cabinet Office determined to fund the ongoing work of the Commission, which unexpectedly carried on into this fiscal year and has done so from savings realized in the overall budget for Head 9. No new money was requested or required, and I can advise Honorable House that there will be no requirement for supplementary funding in this fiscal year for this purpose. Whilst the final costs are not yet available, I will revert to this House with those costs once the final report is printed, the website upgraded, and the appendixes uploaded, and the final service provider costs are paid. Mr. Speaker, this will make difficult reading for some. For others, it will represent the last mile of a race that they have run for decades. History is a delicate thing, Mr. Speaker, and it must be handled with care and treasure as it is in a fulsome understanding of history that we create a stronger present and a better vision for the future. I will invite this Honorable House to consider this report by a motion to be introduced for that purpose. Mr. Speaker, in closing, I would refer this Honorable House to the statement I made in June 2019. The words frame all that the Commission represents and the government's intention in addressing this issue. And I quote, Mr. Speaker, truth can be uncomfortable. Unearthing historic wrongs may be inconvenient for some. It may well be that some of those who are victims and those who committed wrongdoing have since passed on. But it is never too late for justice. That justice can take many forms. For some, it may simply be the opportunity to be heard and have their claims acknowledged. While for others, it may confirm the legal standing they have long asserted. The process of providing justice starts with a step towards truth. End quote. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.